have two freshman Republicans who are also inside that East Room meeting with the president. New York Congressman Michael Grimm serves on the Financial Services Committee, and Oklahoma Congressman James Langford from the Budget, Oversight, and Government Reform Committee. Welcome, gentlemen. Congressman Grimm, let me start with you. Uh, what was it like? Was this your first meeting at the White House in this context? Uh, give us a little bit of the play-by-play. -play. Uh, yes, this was the first time uh, that I had a substantive meeting at the White House. Um, it was quite informal in the sense that the, the president uh, spoke to us very informally, uh, Speaker of the House and our leadership. So it was uh, a very frank, I felt very honest, open discussion. And now, uh, Congressman Grimm, uh, I'm sorry, Congressman Langford, uh, uh, an hour is a lot of time. Was it just uh, sort of staged uh, statements back and forth, or was there anything approaching something that you'd call a real dialogue? No, it was Q&A, but it's really with 240-some-odd uh, people there, you're obviously not going to have a large-scale dialogue. <laughs> we were able to ask a few questions. He, he responded to those, uh, not with a direct response. They were very general in his responses. Uh, but, yeah, we did have some dialogue back and forth. And so, uh, Congressman Grimm, at this hour, what, what are you looking for? Uh, you know, the, there is a, a, a lot of talk about the brinksmanship being played by the Republican caucus. How do you see it? What, what's the path from here to, uh, to a deal? Well, I think, you know, the thing that we have to stress here is that this is the only window of opportunity we're going to get. And the bottom line is we cannot go continue down this path and kick the can down the road. We're broke. The country is spending money we don't have. So that means we have to do a couple of things. We have to dramatically cut spending. We have to put some real systemic reforms in place so that we're not continuing to borrow in the future. And we have to deal with the entitlements that are driving this debt. And I think the president today said that he would love to see entitlements in this plan, and we're going to hold him to that. And so, uh, Congressman Langford, when, when President Obama in the meeting today was talking about seeing entitlements in there somehow, was the Republican caucus convinced? Who, who responded to him on that? Well, it was just about everything. We, we could talk about tax reform in general. We could talk about retirement, entitlement reform in general. Uh, we could talk about uh, cutting spending in general, long-term solutions. All those things we talked about, everyone was nodding their head. When we would ask the president, do you have a specific plan? Because we put specific plans on the table to deal with this. His response was always, no, we'll get over in this back room with the vice president. We'll try to work that out over here. But he was completely unwilling to ever put anything out. It showed a real difference in philosophy where Republicans want to have a large-scale national debate about where to cut spending and how to handle entitlements, and he does not want to have a large-scale national debate. He wants to have a few people in a room in the White House work this out and then present it quickly to the House and Senate and try to get a quick vote. So it was, it was pretty stark, the differences. And now, uh, Congressman Grimm, is there, uh, is, is there something terribly wrong with the back room? Isn't the, the, the group with Joe Biden and the leaders of both parties, isn't that the kind of way deals will ultimately get done in Washington? Or are you guys trying to make sure there's something much more, uh, I guess, public and much more accountable, perhaps? Well, I think accountability right now is important. Obviously, the people of uh, America are disappointed with what's going on in Washington. Washington's broken for years. So we're in here, freshmen trying to fix it. But I think that, you know, the point we have to make here is that the president and the Democratic Party has failed to put a plan on the table so that we can be transparent and we can be held accountable. You know, if you don't like our plan, that's fine. But then tell us what you want to replace it with. Tell us what, what the other option is. They don't want to do that. So I think that that is the starkest difference of all is that we've had the political courage to step up and put something on the table because we, we, we acknowledge the fact that we cannot continue to spend money, spend money we do not have and the Democrats just simply won't put a plan on the table. So I think that's the biggest difference. Now, Congressman Langford, speaking of your plan, and you both voted for the, the Ryan budget plan. Can you tell our audience how much debt that would add to the national debt in the next decade? How much debt it would add to do the Ryan plan? Yes, no, it does continue. Decade. No, if, the, if you're staying your question saying, will it end all debt right away? No, we have a mortgage that we're facing, and it's going to take us a long time to get out of this. So if, if your question is, can we get out of debt in a year, or can we even stop deficit spending a year? No, no one's recommending that, including the, the, the Ryan plan. That's why we find it so ironic that our plan is being called draconian when it takes a long-term look. Uh, I saw someone on your network yesterday even mentioning the fact, how come no one is taking a long-term look at this, and no one's really looking at the future? It's always reactionary at the very end. We're doing that right now with this Ryan plan saying, let's take a long-term look. Let's deal with entitlements that everyone recognizes are the problem in dealing with our debt. Let's try to resolve it and get a long-term picture on that. And then, so it's going to take a long time to deal with it.
Well, but Congressman, we, we just got time for one last question. Congressman Grimm, ju just to share that number, the Ryan budget adds between five and six trillion to the national debt over the next 10 years. There are some skeptics who would say, given that you've voted for a plan that adds more debt than we've ever had during a 10-year period before in our history, why are you guys playing games with the idea of raising the debt limit when your own plan raises it by five to six trillion? No, we can play games with numbers all we want. And Those switch are the real numbers, uh, Congressman. He, he, here's a here's he, here's a fact. For the last three years, we've had over three trillion dollars in deficits. That's going to continue to go up unless we do something that changes the trajectory. There is so much debt with over fourteen trillion dollars that we cannot simply change that overnight. There's no economist in the world, no mathematician that can do that. If you're asking for magic, we don't have that. What we have is a long-term plan that, over time, changes the trajectory of that debt and actually pays it off. That's what the Ryan plan does, and uh, that is just simply a fact. Just look at the numbers again. You cannot get rid of all of our debt in 10 years. No one has a plan to do that. It's just not, it's not physically possible. All right, a conversation that'll have to be continued another day. Thanks very much to uh, Michael very Grimm and to James Lankford, both congressmen involved in these debates. Thanks for taking the time today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Straight ahead, a slice of heaven.